Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Today's show is brought to you by Personal Capital. For a free trial of Personal Capital, just go to MikeOMaraShow.com and click the Personal Capital banner. Or go to PersonalCapital.com slash TMOS. Again, click the Personal Capital banner on MikeOMaraShow.com or go to PersonalCapital.com slash TMOS. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeOMaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Oscar. Chess. You ready for Labor Day? Oh, yeah. Big Labor Day weekend. And I know that uh, Mike is uh, actually in Florida right now, and he's preparing for Labor Day. Although we don't have Mike right now. I don't know where he is. He is uh, away from his microphone. We have his... Uh, oh, oh, wait a second. Charlie Stewart Stabler. Oh. Hello. Hey. Hey. Charlie. Hello. Charlie. <laughs> How are you, boy? Okay, you got to speak into the microphone, Charlie. In, 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 into the mic. Into the microphone. It's into the microphone. <laughs> into the microphone. It's vacation, Hello. Charlie. <laughs> how come you guys aren't here? <laughs> well, how come you're there? You're on TV. <laughs> you're on TV. <laughs> but, Charlie. <laughs> Hello, boys. I had no idea. People. <laughs> I had no idea that you joined Mike. Yeah. Down there in Florida. Well, I, I don't live down here. I just come down to do some chores. Oh, you work for Mr. O'Mara? Yeah. Got what? a cleaning weekend. Got a cleaning weekend. <laughs> we're cleaning the gutters. Were, were you doing the the lawn lawn care yesterday when we were doing no, the show? No, they got a bunch of, you know, they got a bunch of hombres that do that. <laughs> <laughs> they got tons of hombres down here. You mean here. hombres? <laughs> well, yeah, you you said blah 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 blah. Because <laughs> Charlie, you said whatever way you want to, Oscar. <laughs> Charlie, remember the last time we let you use the leaf blower? What happened? Oh my God, I caused a lot of damage. <laughs> I caused a lot of damage. Who was to know that it wasn't for the pool? <laughs> my God, I thought it was for the pool. I thought it was meant to suck the water out of the pool. No, it's not how it works. At Charlie, all. any big plans this weekend? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, well, I got, I'm here for a special reason today, and it's called Trolley Report. Trolley Report. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Charlie Report. Like, like, almost like the spy report. <laughs> yeah, like uh, like Ronald and Fez. Fez. Yeah, remember Ronald Mr. Fezzington? And Fez. Ronald and Fezziwig. <laughs> Yeah, I love Ron and Fez. They're funny. I especially like Fez. Yeah. Fez was funny. <laughs> and Ron was a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. He meant well. Ron Bennington. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Rob. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> Hi, Oscar. Hey. But what is the topic of your Charlie report? Where's that? Is that? I see someone else's hands. Oh, oh. Grimace? <laughs> yeah. I see somebody's hand. That's Rob Ford. Hello, Charlie. Who's Rob Ford? Oh, you've not met him. <laughs> nope. Haven't he's met him. Uh, he's our new intern up here. Hello, Can Charlie. Can I see him? Yeah, go, yeah, to the, yeah, go in front of the camera. Please, please. Oscar you called mind. him Grimace. Let me see. When's he going to go in front of the camera? <laughs> 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 That man's like looking in the mirror. <laughs> you know, Charlie it is, isn't it? Yes. Uh, it's time for Charlie Report. Charlie, Charlie Report. report. <laughs> what is your Are topic? You ready? Yeah. Um, I have to read the new report to you. Yes. All right, here we go. Now, you know this. I've been practicing this. Oh, Charlie, he's talking to the microphone. This Charlie, side. don't you know that this, uh, this Charlie Report has a sponsor? What? The event tonight. Oh, yes. Tonight's Charlie Report is brought to you by Summer Sods and Strings with Big O and Do. Yeah! Oh, Charlie. Yay. You That's got right. the check, man. Thank you so much. It cleared. It's, Appreciate it's, it. It's Oscar Santana and Chad Dukes. Yeah. Chad Dukes. <laughs> Chad Dukes. He got some new firearms. Now, yeah. I know you know Mr. Oscar. Have you ever met Mr. Chad? Only one time. And how'd Only that, one time. How'd that go? He looks like a wrestler. <laughs> With a big long stringy beard. Yeah. Did you two get on okay? Yeah, he's a nice man. Yeah. He has lots of guns though. Yes, he does. He, he said, Charlie, don't get too close to me because I be packing. There you go. <laughs> You're not allowed to own firearms, are you, Charlie? I do not. No, I'm not allowed to touch them. No, under no circumstances. And no. That, I have to be within twenty feet of them. I can't use them at all. No, thank does you. Does that Rob. date back to the orphanage? Yes. Yeah. No, there was a shooting. <laughs> Before the before the arson or after? Yeah, no, it was it was before the arson, uh, but it was a pellet gun. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. that hardly seems. I never to told count. you this story. No, you never. You have. asked me these new stories. My brother Matthew, who's confined to a wheelchair and was burned in the arson fire, also <laughs> lost his eye when I shot him with a pellet gun. Oh, that's after sad. the fire started. 
Yeah, you know, this is long before the oh, fire. Okay. This is when we were out in the backyard shooting at targets, and I shot him accidentally in the eye. But as mm. I told the headmaster of the orphanage, who are you going to tell? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because you don't All have right. parents. I get it. That's right. Does it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Nobody's coming into that office to protest. No. That's for sure. No, no. We're just, uh, we're just warehoused. <laughs> we were warehoused. <laughs> It was actually oh, kind of like one of those big personal storage unit things, wasn't it? Just a whole bunch of big orange doors, like, yeah. like garage doors. Yeah, we were warehoused, <laughs> and uh, some of us in uh, more comfortable circumstances than others. Well, the longer you stay, um, the bigger locker you got. Yes, absolutely. Uh, lockers, uh, you know, that, that's uh, in the very loosest sense. <laughs> now, anyway, did you, uh, did, did you share a room with Matthew? Yes, of course. He's my brother. Because it would almost have to be first floor then. Well, I, it was a room, but it was uh, yeah. It was first floor. It was, uh, but didn't. Hey, it didn't help me. It didn't prevent me from running up those stairs in the fire. That's right. And you know yeah. what? It, it's still a mystery how that mulch fire started. I got everybody out that I could. Okay. <laughs> Charlie, report. Charlie, report. Charlie losing his voice. Uh, all right. This shouldn't come as a surprise. It's time for the Charlie. Do we have music for the Charlie Report, Rob? We do. Please. All right. Fact. Charlie Report. Charlie Report. <laughs> this shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone who's ever driven in. Oh, God. Who's Charlie, ever... who prepared this, this for you? Th um, I, well, I went over it. I rehearsed. I practiced. But who prepared uh, the copy? Did Mike prepare the copy? Yes, Mr. O'Mara. Yeah, okay. uh, right. yeah, he's uptight today. He said something. He's <laughs> walking around his living room, and he's going, God damn Twitch. <laughs> uh, but anyway, oh, uh, dear. I don't know what's well, going then. on. Yeah. So anyway, he gave this to me. This should not come as a surprise to anyone who's ever drive, <laughs> drive, driven, who's ever driven, driven, dri driven, driven in, in, Ma, mas, masach, massa, massa, massach, true. Oh, Massachusetts. Yes. Uh, it's not your imagination. They really are the worst drivers. I have the list really? of the 10 worst cities to drive in and the 10 best cities. So, what you're saying, Charlie, is if we listen to this list, we'll know all of the good and bad places to drive. And Mr. Romero said I should ask you guys, do you want me to go from worst to the best or from best to the worst? Worst to best? Actually, actually, Charlie, what you should do is, as a DJ, you should say worst to first. Worst, worst to first. Yeah. Okay, worst you want the worst cities or the, or the best cities? The worst cities first. The worst cities. Okay, hold on. Yeah, I like okay, that. Okay, the number first. 10 worst city is New Haven. New Haven. Con. N New Ha, New Hav, New Hav Con, Connecticut. Yes, that New Ha, New Hav, this New Hav, Connecticut. Yeah. Some yes, of your favorite uh, people live in New Haven, like like Paul Schaefer. Paul Schaefer. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, David. Oh, I didn't Hello, know you did David. A voice. <laughs> Let him in rules. Yeah, he does. Uh, all right, number nine yes. is P Heil A D P. <laughs> What? Is, number nine city is P high, P, P no no P high La yeah. Delph. Oh P Hiya. Philadelphia. Philadelphia. That's it. Yeah, That's very it. good. Mm -hmm. The next one is uh, number eight city is A Lexan Dry A Alexandria. That's it. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Right around the corner Thank here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, hold on. Moving right along. This Alex. is like Charlie a report. This Charlie is almost report. like a Chuck Woolery show. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven is Glen Dale, California. Ah, hey, good job. you know that. <laughs> I got that one. Yeah. Glendale, California. easy to read. Do you have easy relatives in California, Charlie? I don't. I only have one relative, and he's hanging on by a thread. Okay, uh, <laughs> number six is, I know this. I can know this one on site. Baltimore. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know Baltimore. Well, I know you, how to read that you one. You vacation there every year. That's right, Baltimore. <laughs> Baltimore is in Maryland, my state. <laughs> okay, number five is. Oh, oh boy. Prom. 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 Pro. 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 Provide. 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 What are they providing? Provide Nick. Provide oh, Nick. Providence. Provide. Providence. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are so smart. Yeah. I love this. So okay. are you, Charlie. You're giving Thank great you. clues. <laughs> uh, number four is Springfield. And that, that other... T In Massachusetts? That other, that, yeah, I don't know the, the second yeah, one, yeah, but yeah, I know yeah. Springfield because I watched The Simpsons. Do you think that's <laughs> The Simpsons where Homer lives? No, that's uh, Springfield... Uh, Rhode that's Island. That, 
Springfield doesn't have a state, no? right? It doesn't have a state. You're right. Well, on the Simpsons it show. It does not. One of Come these on. days, they Family should guys. I wish they Come would on. reveal it. Come on, dummy. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry, Charlie. <laughs> I didn't mean to be stupid. Number three is Washington, D.C. Oh. I recognize that one because I've seen it a lot, too. Washington, yes, D.C. Sure, number you... two Number two is uh, Bo... Is Bose... Bose. Bose. Bose to Bose Basto. Basto. Bosto. Boston. Boston. Yes, Basto. Yes. yes. And that same, what's that, that other word? Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Yeah, that's the one. And number one is, uh, work cast, work, 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 work Easter. Work what? Easter. Worcester. Work Easter. Worcester. Or Worcester. No. Yeah, Worcester. 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 It's Worcester. pronounced Worcester. Worcester. Okay? That's right. I'll even say that during the bit. <laughs> That's the number one. Yes, thank you very much. I thought it was Worcester. And, oh, no, uh, no. By the way, Charlie Report is so sorry for anyone that might be finding this difficult to listen to. All right, here we go. Charlie, now the safest everyone cities. everyone loves you. Everyone loves you, Charlie. All right, uh, number 10, uh, the best cities to drive in is Olathe, Kansas. Olathe? O-L-A-T-E. O L A T H E. Olath? Do they even have Olath. cars there, Charlie? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> number three, number nine is Mad I Mattis. Madison, Madison, Wisconsin. That's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, number eight is Larry. 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 Lay Lair E Do. Larry Do. Larry Do. Larry Do. Oh, Texas. Laredo. Laredo. Laredo, Texas. That's right. Texas. Thank, Thank you. Right. Thank you, Rob. Uh, number number seven is oh no. Oh dear. Visa. Visa Leah. Visa Leah, oh, California. Visalia. Oh, that's right. Thank Visalia, you. California. Uh, number six is Montgomery. Mont Montgomery. Montgomery. Mont Montgomery. Montgomery. Mont Montgomery. Yes, Alabama. Oh, cool. Uh, that's nice. Number five. Number five is Hunt. Where? <laughs> Hunt. Start again from the top, Charlie. <laughs> Hunt. Hunt. Really? Hunt. You're really. Huntsville? Rob, you're a real. You're real. That's it. Yes, thank you. Oh, thank God. Thank you. Maybe it was a haunted house. <laughs> <laughs> I love those. Yeah, I know you do. Charlie's losing his voice. Anyway, number four <laughs> yeah. is K Ain. K Ain, Kansas. Kansas. Yes. Kansas. Yes, Kansas City. Kansas City, Kansas, or Kansas City, Missouri? Kansas. Oh, good. Okay, Kansas City, Kansas. That's thank the better you. one, anyway. Number three is Bo I C Boise. 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 Boy yes, that's Idaho. right. N number two is Brown. Brown. Browns. Browns. Browns vile. Browns vile. That, that's right. <laughs> and the number one, he said, find the symphony. Yeah. Okay, well, and the number one here. Charlie, is... you're running your own elements. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh Fo Fort Fort. Fort. Yes. Cole. Uh, hi. Coline? Fort Four. Or Collins? Yes, that's right. <laughs> All right, start the show. Suck a dick. <laughs> it's the Michael Mara Show. You can listen to the Michael Mara Show at www.michaelmarashow.com. Stay tuned. We're not standing entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Michael Mara Show. Let's get down to business. We're on the entertainment capital of the world. Good afternoon, chef. I'm the census taker. Well, you got me at a busy time. Oh, it'll only take a few moments. Now, where were you born? Lake Winnipesaukee. Lake Win... How do you spell that? W-O... Woof. Make it Lake Erie. I got an uncle there. What was your family decomposed of? Well, I'll tell you. There was a litter of three. And I was the one they kept. <laughs> hey! Why, you... Oh! 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 Stranger, I'm the census taker. Where were you born? Lake Winnipesaukee. Lake Winnipesaukee? How many in the family? I was one of a litter of three. No, don't tell me you're the one they kept. No, I'm the one they threw away. Oh! Hey, what's the idea? I saw him first. Oh, you did? Give me my four cents. Would you take five? Oh, a bonus, sure. Yeah, okay, well, I'm... Lake Winnipesaukee, huh? Oh! One of a litter of three, huh? Oh! Oh, a three litter man, eh? Oh, oh, thanks. I never would have got out without you. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Mike O'Mara, Rob Spiewak, Oscar Santana. And now, from his easy chair, here's Mike. You know, there are days when I think we should do a dress rehearsal, and those days happen when I do 
13 minutes of Charlie followed by Curly from the Three Stooges. <laughs> I, I would like to say if anybody's brain is hurting right now, my sincere apologies right now. How perfect. And it was also Curly spelling. It's just more evidence that Rob and I have the same. We really uh, do have the same the, brain. The same wavelength that Rob says, yes, it's Friday. It's a holiday weekend. Let's do something, you know, retarded and silly. Let's do that. Absolutely. <laughs> so we decided to Great do minds, Mike. Great minds. We, we are live from the Cappy Pfeiffer Studios and heard worldwide. This is the Mike O'Mara Show. We are powered by Encore Insurance Services with over 25 million downloads. Heard daily at MikeOmeraShow.com and exclusively over the air on the mighty 1630 KCJJ in the heart of the heartland. Go Hawks! Mike, it is with a heavy heart that I hold this piece of paper because with the close of birthday season, this will yes. be our last KCJJ listener of the day for the foreseeable future. Oh, my God. What a shame. Oh, <laughs> man. Maybe till next summer? Could be, yeah. So I yeah, maybe we do another summer campaign. Yeah, that's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Yes. I'd like to send out a special greeting, Mike, to Al Frauenholtz, Amanda Peterson, Gail Cole, Al Havens, Alicia Pearl, Amy Brodsky, Amy McLaughlin, Andrea Dua. Jan Why are you Mino, reading all the names? Because they reading? all want to get their name in because, you know, it's birthday Well, wait season. a minute. I thought this was just a database. I, I thought that they didn't care about getting their name in. No, they I care. thought this was a random database sent by KCJJ. The listener cares, Mike. The, the listener, listener cares. cares. Okay, very good. Go ahead, read them all. These I know are you all want to. Oh, no, 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 no. Rob none Mobbers of them are. Iowa. None of them are. I will choose one randomly that is the actual final listener of the day. Okay. Boom. Timpani again, ladies and oh, gentlemen. Oh, red hot box. Amanda Davis in Coralville, Iowa. Yeah. yeah. What has she won? Nothing. Oh. Thank you. Uh, the Mike O'Mara Show is a daily podcast and radio show with the greatest listeners on the planet. Why? Why, Mike? Because they get it. I want to talk to you about FanDuel. They're our sponsor today. And FanDuel is the best place for fantasy football. FanDuel.com, the leader in one-week fantasy football leagues for real money. Rofo is my new partner in this FanDuel experience, and we are going to clean up. We have the lineup that's set for our trial balloon this weekend. Rofo, how are we looking? I have to say, when you sent me the lineup yesterday, even though I did not interfere, yes. I will tell you that uh, I believe that your lineup was laden with prospects and not necessarily ah. starters. Am well, I right it, about it, that? It was because we play. We actually played last night for the preseason games. Right. Ooh. Because you, you can't wait for this genius of a team. Yeah. And okay. how are we? Well how said. are we doing? Just to, can you give us just a little idea of how we're doing? In the lineup last night, we got fourth place. Wow. Hey. That means we're in the money. Absolutely. Yay. Yep. That, that's that's incredible. And the there's money, no, baby. There's no season-long commitment, no upfront fees. Contest entry fees start at just a dollar. FanDuel has more players and pays out more cash than all the other one-week fantasy sites combined. Just ask Chris Prince. He won $656,000. Our dream scenario. Wow. Wouldn't that be amazing for us? It really will. They pay out over $400 million a year, so FanDuel can do it for you. Remember, FanDuel.com. Click the microphone in the upper right-hand corner and use the code TM. MOS, the first 50 to use the TMOS code, get their deposit matched up to $200. Dollars, dollars, dollars Mike, dollars. That's free money, FanDuel.com, where every week is a new season. That's F-A-N-D-U-E-L.com, and sign up TD. Thank you very much. We're very excited about that. So uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm a little run down today due to the fact that uh, – the Mike O'Mara show travel agency was open late last night where <laughs> I was making travel arrangements uh, for the christening of my son and for the another thing I will announce to, today, which is very exciting, which came up at the last minute and a trip back east uh, that I will be taking uh, around December. And uh, it just got to a point where it's it's a cluster f i i think we have to address this subject now the fact is i sprung this on my good buddy rob and my good buddy oscar that really i was down here thinking about people that i wanted to uh be godparents to uh, my son and i said you know what it's special why moment. don't you it is call call the lady and ask her is it possible to have two godfathers because the guys that have been with me through the the real ups and the real downs have been Rob and Oscar, and uh, you know I trust them, and I think that's part of the the game here. And uh, it's a band of brothers that we have on this show. And I said I'm going to ask them to do it, and if they'll allow 
two godfathers, I'll do this. So I uh, once I got the nod from the uh, the old church fathers down here. Now, is it I an am... upcharge for that? Is that a different package where you have to get <laughs> two godfathers? Know. You know, the I haven't even... jubilee package. <laughs> I haven't gotten to that part yet. But the fact is, uh, <laughs> oh. as soon as as soon as I got the nod, I said, okay, now I can impose on uh, on Oscar and, and Rob. And I'll tell you, doing the flight arrangements last night. Can I can I ask a question about the transportation? infrastructure sure. of Washington DC. Yeah. When did Washington DC, uh, you know, you think Dulles Airport, this huge international hub, John Foster and, Dulles International Airport. And you can't fly to Dick from Dulles. No you can't. You can't. You cannot. It, I mean there's no it, it's just it's uh, you can fly to Amsterdam but screw trying to fly to any city in America without having to connect. You're trying and it you're sucks, exactly right. Sucks. Sucks. So question for you: I, You yes, always have enjoyed. There's a part of you that's enjoyed making flight arrangements. But right. we've been together so long that there was a time when we started that we actually used a travel agent, an ex, and a, an occupation that doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't really exist. Do anymore. you do you miss having the ability to go to a travel agent to make this happen? No, I don't. I wouldn't do it because I used to. You know, on the old show, I used to like doing uh, travel arrangements. Right, I right. was always real good at it. But the fact is. Uh, you get a small airport like where I am, relatively small, right. not that small, but relatively small. And then you get Washington, D.C. And, you know, Boston likes it down here. New York likes it down here. Right. Chicago likes it down yes. here. Charlotte likes it down here. Washington, D.C., I, it, it is the hardest, hardest city to get down here in a reasonable way. And, you know, without spending an absolute fortune. And so that's why I assume you guys have been looking at it, too. Yeah. I'm probably we're probably going to have you guys fly into Lauderdale. Yeah. Isn't that the way it's going to work? I uh, actually when I first did the first flight search, I forget which of the great airlines I checked. One of their suggested flights was to leave Dulles, connect through Los Angeles mm -hmm. and yep. then go back to Fort Lauderdale. Think yeah. of that. It's Think ridiculous. Or Fort Myers, right? Fort Myers is that what it was? No, it was, was Lauderdale. It? Lauderdale. This one was Lauderdale. Now, have you guys? Uh, have you? You've been working on it. How's it going? I haven't even checked with you off air. How's how's the uh, how's the flight search? There are going? several options. None they're of them as are... expensive as I thought they were. Yeah, gonna but be. not crippling expensive. No, no, no. Not horrible. I mean, they're about no, but, where you but you're expect. flying into Lauderdale. You're not flying to where I live. You're flying to the other side of the state. Per so your you're, suggestion, you're an though, hour you said, and a half you said, away. You said to, to route to Lauderdale. Yeah, I have not even checked Fort Myers. Well, you will check Fort Myers. If I will. You haven't made the final uh, yeah, decision. Fort Myers check is so Fort much Myers. better. Okay. Yeah. All right. Even I if, no you, if you guys don't mind connecting, you come right into Fort Myers. That would be. I flew I'm already from Fort My to Fort Myers when I saw you. Did you really? Yeah, straight there. Okay. Well, check it out because yeah. it's uh, it's uh, anyway. I'm flying my daughters to Lauderdale because it was cheaper. That's that's the way uh, mm. I was doing it, and it was also quicker. You know, a two hour and forty minute flight, and then it's an hour and a half across Alligator Alley. Yeah. But I'm going out of my mind, and I I was so. In, in depth with this that suddenly my mind began to race and I said you know what the only way I'm going to get decent fares uh, for flying people around like this and getting people here and there and you know I've got family in Maine I've got family in Boston I've got family in Virginia and this is the reality of my world now that I love being where I am but in order for me to see people I got to get them to me or I have to get to them and last night it was just critical mass Carla would tell you I was sitting there sweating uh, over my computer, and I'm going, well, uh, well, then if we're going to fly the girls down in March, I uh, I better get this flight right now and get this taken care of. And suddenly, uh, a little uh, oasis in the middle of the desert, I see our good friends Rob at Frontier Airlines. Don't oh, know, not them. Frontier, oh. Frontier Airlines. Oh, Frontier boys. Airlines. I will be flying up to uh, the D.C. area the first week in October. Okay. And I will be doing a show with you guys on Friday. Cool. Because Friday night, I have to uh, go down to the University of Mary Washington because my daughter, Catherine, scored the lead in her school play for University Yay! of Mary Washington. Yay! Yes. 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 What you show? Ever see, you ever see the movie Doubt? You ever see the movie Doubt? You of know course. the Amy Adam, the yes. Amy Adams character. Oh yeah. That is my daughter. Oh, she, uh, that is worked great. Worked on it all summer long, and Good she is. For uh, her. That's they did huge. their first reading. She got the call back. This goes Bing Bang Boom. They get the call back. Wow. Then they 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 choose their lead after the call back, and she was named the lead. And they were doing their uh, read through, their table read uh, or read through, I think it's called uh, mm -hmm. last night. So nice. I am. You so have cool. got to be over the moon and oh, her. You, and let me tell you, well. right, look, I know uh, where 
the jump off point is between high school performances and college theater. Oh, yeah, yeah. And if there's a significant theater program at a college, it's usually it's a huge stepping stone. And I will tell you, I was just I got all Irish. I was oh, so no. incredibly punching everybody. Psyched. Eight potatoes. <laughs> That's right. I drank a six pack and started punching everybody right away. I was so so excited for my daughter. It was just. Uh, to pull the I curtain know. back, you actually, you were, uh, this was top of mind for you yesterday pre-show. You yes, were telling yeah. me about the callback and how you had yep. your fingers crossed, and yeah. we didn't mention it on the show. She that got two callbacks. So, so cool. One for the musical they do that down there, and then the other for this drama that she really wanted. Right. That she actually learned her lines already for uh, going into her audition. She knew the part. Oh, I said, wow. really, I said, really, if you're going to, if you really want this, I, I did the whole lecture with her. I said, if you really want this. Uh, you go in, this is just like you would go into a Hollywood audition, you go in more prepared than anybody else. And then yeah. if the playing field is equal, that's what's going to kick you over the top. Mm -hmm. And I just was... Uh, you know what, what she did, did, Oscar? She Will Smithed it. Ah, yeah, there you she go. She over-prepared. <laughs> is that what Will Smith does? If you watch what? the first season of The Fresh Prince, True you story. can see Will Smith sometimes mouthing the dialogue of the other characters because he would memorize the entire script. He oh, was wow. that overprepared, but he's still a jerk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that is true. Uh, yeah. Let me let me see what she wrote me because this is one of the neatest things. If you get this from your uh, daughter, yeah, um, maybe it's, Pony it's will a, send it to me someday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when Pony uh, gets the lead in doubt. <laughs> all right. So the first uh, this is yesterday. You're gonna have to yep. shave the beard, Pony. Jail. <laughs> this is yesterday at three thirty-five. I'm gonna share this with you because okay. uh, I don't gush very often about my kids. I'm right. gushing today. All right. Uh, so excited for you. Congratulations. That's after we had a phone call uh, and talked about it. And she said, thanks. There are a few times I've been happier. How cool is that? Oh, that you get that from your nice. kid? Nice. That is Isn't so that nice? cool. And then, uh, you know, after or that. Or it the, could be kind of sad because if this is a shouldn't highlight? she be happy all the time? No. This is just showing. She's led a very happy <laughs> life. He is. Mike, don't look. No, I could ask you a question, Oscar. Shouldn't you be kind all the time, you dick? Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's the way I would look. Can you be kind? Can you be kind, Button? Uh, but we'll come back, and uh, I want to talk a little bit more about just this travel thing. I want to yeah. button it up because it's top of mind. And then I want to dive right into Rob Spiewak because uh, Rob is having <laughs> one of his toughest Labor Days ever. Yes. I will tell you why when we come back on the Mike O'Mara Show. You're listening to Rod Stewart, baby. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. This segment of the program is brought to you by our good friends at Compulsive 3.0. Oh, That's yeah. right. He's done it again, ladies and gentlemen. The genius of Todd Moore has produced something revolutionary on your phone. It's called Compulsive 3.0. And now they have it for iOS and Android. Compulsive 3.0 has been released. Take your scores to the next level with all new power-ups. Todd was telling me just the other day, you can dust off tiles. I said, no, yes! really? <laughs> That's right. He was calling you and telling you this? <laughs> yeah. And as a matter of fact, I thought he was like in a trance of some kind when I looked at Todd Moore and he said, I'm cleaning my colors away. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, uh, you know, like he came to and he came right. out of his meditative state and he said, and I can organize the board however I want for 10 seconds. How long? 10 seconds. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> With three game modes, multiplayer and the new power-ups. You have to ask yourself this question. What's not to lie? <laughs> so true. So listen, it's great. Hey, how are you? Uh, Apple featured Compulsive 3.0 as a best new game on iTunes. The LA Times said, if Norman Rockwell designed a video game, <laughs> it would look a lot like TM Soft's Compulsive. Something like that. Yeah. We think that's a compliment. Everyone, please download the update and then leave a five-star review for our friend Todd Moore. It's a great game if you haven't played it. It's a free download. The game is a lot of fun. Remember, those five-star reviews would mean the world. Again, that's Compulsive 3.0 by TM Soft. And remember, it is 100% Fluoride free. Oh, yeah. Yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah, boy. yeah boy. Right on the front of iTunes. Hey, there, boy. Uh, welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Want to get to uh, Rob talking about uh, his sadness. On this I've got an weekend. innate sadness. Man. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, uh, Rob's very frustrated. You know, uh, kind of a sad day for uh, great lady uh, Joan Rivers, and we wish her the very best, too. She's, uh, as we do this, as we tape this, I don't know. Don't read Tough ahead. Tough to get real information. Don't read ahead. Here. I've got some <laughs> info on the 
Oscar Oh, Razzi. okay. Oh. We'll leave that to you and Oscar Razzi. Yeah, I won't say another word about it. Uh, so wrapping up this she's travel dead. thing. No, uh, she's not. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That is, that's a horrible Jesus job. Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. What's wrong not, with nothing. him today? Wow. And he's people got, say, I've got a soul black as a thousand midnights. No. Well, he's got the live thing. This tonight. man is, yeah. all ramped up. He is a little ramped up. He's got a He's, you know, he's ramped up with us when we do a live show, and he's ramped up. When he's business. got a big on Duke show. It's show. Yeah, yeah, he's all ramped up. His show. T-shirts Look at you. extra. You're not here. Babe. He's not here. I had no. to just put a black veil over him today. <laughs> he's not here. Put a he tag on his toe. Here. Pull the sheet yes. over his face. Right, yeah. right. Uh, so, guys, seriously, check out, uh, you know, getting to Fort Myers too. I will. You know? And then, but uh, does it seem to you? And we've all done this for a while. When you put in your parameters for the flight you want, there are just less flights. There used to be it's, like 15, 20, 25 to choose from. Yeah, yeah. Now you get like five, and you just well, don't have the option. Well, they brought down the supply. Yeah. There are tons of them if you connect. It's just there are not, they're, they're not enough nonstop flights because yeah. the uh, homogenization of the airline industry, it's just uh, it's frustrating, and it's tough to do, and it's so effing expensive. I can't yeah. wait for the Hyperloop. What is that again? Uh, that's Elon Musk's design. Uh, where... Now, do you think that'll be ready in yeah, time well, for the Yeah, well, you know what? I hope you, enjoy, I hope you enjoy your inaugural ride on that when you're 72, <laughs> and, I'm, uh, and I've been worm food for 15 years. That's right. I really hope you enjoy that. That'll be terrific. Yeah, be that'll great. be so much fun. No, I, Thanks uh, for solving everything, Oscar. I, I'm doing a one-way. I'm doing a one-way because Carla's going to be driving back through uh, from Maine uh, that, first, uh, that last week in September, first week in October. So I got a... Uh, uh, what I thought was kind of a budget beater, one hundred ten dollars with the insurance included, Ooh. not bad uh, on, on Frontier Airlines flying. You know, uh, you couldn't drive flying into DC. You couldn't drive it that cheap. If you think gas and everything, you <laughs> no, couldn't. You could. No, you could. But that then I said, oh hey, Frontier, fantastic. I've I've flown Frontier. We've fl- flown them out west. Yeah, I, out I in, like recall, Denver. Weren't they're, we they're, seated they're, in a crate? Yeah, but the, you know they're a major airline out in Denver, Rob. We just don't know about them here on the East Coast. And the fact is, I get excited. I'm like, hey, look at these, really, really cheap. And I go to March, right? Because I said, well, I'll yeah. fly Elizabeth down on that if it's that cheap in March, and I'll book it early. And I go down, and you see a calendar come up, and the calendar comes up, and it ends the uh, last day of February. Well, they don't and like then you planning see this, ahead. You see this great? No, they just they don't have flights. Oh, they just don't. They don't have flights. I don't know what's going on. I have no idea why they did not. The service discontinued is what they said. Oh, on they're, the close, they're closing the company, and I think Jesus that's wise. Uh, Are they really? I, I don't know. The thing about the scare me. I won't Frontier go on is, uh, I'm sure they're a fine, upstanding airline, but it's the same problem with Turkey Hill Ice Cream. I just don't like the name. When you say Frontier <laughs> Airlines, All right, well, it that's, sounds like that's you're really, going to an that's old That's coming West. from a place of pure <laughs> logic, you mallet head. Okay. That's fine. You just don't like the name. Well, yeah. I mean, Frontier, I think of a wooden plane. I see like a wagon wheel. I or see the no. sagebrush. Yeah. I've flown, we've flown Frontier. It's perfectly adequate. Yeah, but it's I really fully expected airline. when I boarded it, it would look like an old school hair pair, like an old stable. Just, you know, like there'd be a hitching rack. Because it's Frontier. Step right up. You know, it's, you know, cowboys I just and you want I, the future I, for air travel. Yeah. I just wish they do it. I had to book tickets for my uh, mother-in-law. I had to book, book tickets for my first daughter and my second daughter. Did you and use the, the great old joke? What's that? I just got back from a pleasure trip. I took my mother-in-law to the airport. Hey, oh, there you go. Hey, I want to tell you. It just sucks. And then, you know, when you're buying tickets for somebody else and then you've got to get into the system, they said, the ID has to be exactly as it is on the government issued ID. Oh, so I got to track everybody down yeah. and make sure I've got middle names right, except for my kids. But I didn't know whether my, my you know my daughter's middle name would be the initial or the full name. Well, they were all the full names because I guess that's the way they do driver's licenses now. Yeah. But it just it's it totally stressed me out. And, it's bad, and, you know. But this is my reality that I'm also still getting used to is that I'm hopping between yeah. locations a lot. And I and you <laughs> move. Over and at Oscar. Also, look at over at Oscar right now. And Oscar, you know what's you know what's playing. Kind of a continuous loop in Oscar's brain right what? now. It's like, you're the one that wanted to do it. Oh my God. You're the one like that wanted here. to do it. I know it is. You're the Inside one that wanted to do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why, bitch, when you're the one that I wanted said, you're to do it. The dream. I wish I could be up in Maine and also down in Florida. <laughs> but, Mike, you know what? In a yes. way, this is good because it's preparing you for the mental anguish of the flight itself. Because, yeah, I know. Uh, you know, flights themselves have gotten worse, too. 
And it's a five o'clock flight, which uh, in, the in the morning? No, it's five o'clock in the evening. Oh, and thank uh, God. the one that I'm taking up Thursday, we're going to do the show here Thursday, and then fly up and join you guys, mm -hmm. and uh, and then uh, go to the play, and then drive back down to Florida Saturday. Good and Sunday. man, busy Good day. Man. Busy well, I, you know, it's worth it to see my daughter for fall. Anything That's for your the kids. Way it is. Yes. Anything for my kids. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. And uh, I'm so thrilled for her. And this is and the of course, Mike, you will be prepared to understudy any character. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> God forbid something happens the night of the well, performance. I I will be uh, you know I've been rehearsing already for the uh, late Philip Seymour Hoffman's role. Uh, you know I will be playing the priest. And yeah. I will be very yeah. good at that. Pack the outfit. I think I'd play a wonderful potential pedophile priest. I think it would be wonderful. I think I'd be good at that. You could, but you'd have to come in, but you'd only know the lines from the Miracle Worker. <laughs> <laughs> that pitch about your ideals being so old fashioned. It's a very lightweight alpaca. It's a very lightweight alpaca. Oh, I, I would I pay a million dollars for you to step out on that stage because somebody fell ill and say, you know, I'll I, take it from here. Yeah, I've never seen that along came Polly. You know what? It's like the plot of Showgirls. Yeah. Actually, uh, <laughs> Rob was telling me that I know the lines from the Miracle Worker. It's actually, yes, that was Streetcar Named Desire that I knew the lines for. And I, oh, I forgot the you did Streetcar scene, as well, yes. Uh, streetcar, the opening scene, I still remember it when uh, it was like a little bit part that we had where the lady comes across in the black and uh, she's uh, selling flowers for funerals. Yes. And she goes, Flore, <laughs> Flores para los muertos. And Mike, if anyone ever doubted, if anyone yes. doubted for a moment that we are true theater queens, we just cinched yep. it by both of us referring to the play as Streetcar. Streetcar. Yeah, did you do streetcar? Yeah, we did streetcar. Streetcar. Street car. Yes, Hello, <laughs> the world is a stage. Uh, oh God, what's wrong with me? Um. So anyway, good luck to uh, Catherine. Congratulations, I love you her. You say break a leg, and, break a leg, uh, really yeah. break a leg, sweetheart. And uh, can't wait to come up, and I'll be uh, seeing you guys uh, the end of September, beginning of October. So that'll be that'll be cool. that'll be fun. Always too. love Looking when you're in that. studio. That'll be great. Rob, uh, you are disconcerted this weekend because more than of that. Your your pal Jerry, uh, not going to be there for the Jerry. Yeah, it starts out, Mike. It does. It starts out with me as you know, the, as the kids start to get ready for school. Yes. You know, when we start doing school supplies, I get in that mental scene where you know summer is coming to an end, mm. and for my entire life, the end of summer was capped by the greatest twenty-one and a half hours of television of all time. Now, the this Jerry is, Lewis telethon. This is a window into Rob Spiewak's soul, ladies and gentlemen, because people think of Labor Day as the last great blowout of the summer. They nope. think this is our last chance to get out of doors, to uh, have barbecues, to go down on the water, to go to the beach, to be out there, and just, uh, you know, everybody comes back with a sunburn. Not if you uh, happen to be so in love with your magic box that you stay in of doors for right. the entire 21 hours of the telethon. As the kids would be headed off to school, there I would stand with my skin a milky white because I'd been in the basement for the last 30 hours straight. It got easier like the past, you know, 10 years or so because DVRing the telethon meant you didn't have to stay up all night. Yeah. And, and the telethon became less and less of a, an entertainment vehicle. And exactly. They watered it down. I mean, didn't they ruin it at the end? I mean, it was just a uh, less and less entertainment. The telethon in its heyday, Rob, was... Mid-70s, unbelievable. 21 hours, really. Uh, well, well, like 48 hours, right? No, it was always about 21, 21 and a half hours. So it was 21 hours of entertainment, entertainment, entertainment. And it was based in Las Vegas, right? We are here to entertain you. We are right. here to inform you, and we right. are here to impose ourselves into your pocketbooks. That was Is that what he said? They would say stuff like that, and that's what it was. And what I would, if I had, oh, you're killing me. <laughs> You'd be very <laughs> careful. But oh, we did we find out something very interesting today, Mike, that what? right now Jerry Lewis is being handled by a magician. Really? <laughs> yes. Yeah, because because we, Rofo has We've been, been trying him. to book him on the show because he's got that show in uh, Northern uh, not Newport Northern Virginia, News. Newport, Newport News. News. I have yeah. my tickets in October. Yeah. God forbid something. You know. He's a uh, comedian slash uh, magic guy. He's at his own magic shop in Jersey. What's his name? A uh, Rick Sapphire. <laughs> 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 this is the type of highbrow talent we're dealing with. Wow. But Mike and Rick, Sa wait, Rick Sapphire, the magician, is uh, the agent for Jerry Lewis. His Jerry's manager, his manager and representation. And I like yeah. to make a note that Sapphire with one P. Yeah. Oops. So please, Mike, <laughs> don't make the same mistake again. So wow. while I will get through the weekend, I have for the last three years of Labor Day without Jerry. Right. I would like, to, if I could, to take a few moments to play you some of your favorite tapes of Telethon's past.
because right, we'll hold that off it. and we'll do that when we come back okay. because I want to uh, I want to pay homage to uh, to Jerry and it's uh, it's going to be terrific and uh, you know you could show Mr. Santana a little more respect for Jerry. To, uh, yes. to Jerry. I'm and, just uh, busting balls. I know he's an institution. <laughs> you know what? He was the Beatles of comedy for a while. I heard. That's sound, right. You sound so enthusiastic. You have got your total abode swagger <laughs> on today. <laughs> what are you yeah, talking about? Yeah, it's okay. I got, yeah, let me swing my big old dick around. Hey! This guy's a, he's an, in, he's an institution. He's an institution. Oh, that's a, you fat guys like him. That's all. I'll humor you today. I'll humor you today. That problem. Uh, anyway, when we come back, we'll talk about Jerry, and we will talk about uh, Joan Rivers as well. Yes. Maybe we can get an update. Oh, well, you're going to do that in Oscarazzi, so we won't no do that. Uh, but I will also talk about uh, little brat Danny, little brat yes. Danny Snyder, and the fact that he wants a new stadium. <laughs> we'll take a break. Come back with more on the Michael Mara Show. Hey, I'm Gary Stein, and I'm Tony Perkins of the Tony Perkins Show, featuring me, Gary Stein. You don't sound like Gary Stein. You know what? We're reading the wrong lines on this piece of paper. Really? Yeah, I'm Tony Perkins. See, that's why we're better off doing it improvisationally. <laughs> <laughs> Please check us out. It's a great show. We're having a great time doing it. You can check it out at TonyPerkinsShow.com. You know why you should? Because we mean well. The Tony <laughs> Perkins Show. <laughs> really listen to that. That is such a fantastic show. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Amazon. So we've been goofing around for around. a few weeks about our Amazon page. And that's fine. But we need to remind you of one very important fact. Shopping through our Amazon portal remains the single best way to support this show. Remember, it doesn't cost you anything and it means the world to us. The next time you need to buy anything, just go to michaelmarishow.com slash Amazon. And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, here with the Amazon purchase of the day is Mr. Rob Spiewak. That's right, Mike. No, no I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I, I could not have effing set you up with a, you had a hole the side and you hit the wrong music again. I sure did. Oh my God! I had my what do you mean? Hold, hold it a too. second. Hold it. Yes. What do you mean? Hit the wrong music again? Well, you well, hit the wrong. Messed something up. I messed you messed something it up, up yeah, again. Yes. You messed, messed up again. I didn't mean hit the wrong yeah. music again. You messed up again. I and did. That's, a, that's the perfect setup. And the bit now for for every day we've done the commercial right. has been that we're redoing it. And, <laughs> yeah. And you know what the problem is that, here? What's it's that? the weak what? link, and that's it's me. The, what okay. can I do? No, no. I'm trying my best. All right. I, I slipped know, one finger. I've got the copy. You, and you, if we were to move forward, 95 people out of 102 wouldn't have picked up on it. Let's work but on I, your best. <laughs> Let's get you to shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Guess All what, right. Mike? Yes. It's the Panasonic G. No, 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 no. We'll do it from the top. We'll okay. do it from the top. All right. Okay, you're welcome, Well, listeners. we'll take it halfway back. All right. <laughs> Remember, it doesn't cost you anything extra, and it means the world to us. The next time you need to buy anything, just go to he plays the regular, regular back. <laughs> That's making me laugh. Oh, man. Remember, yeah, everyone's it, laughing. It, Mostly remember, me. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and it means the world to us. The next time you need to buy anything, just go to MikeOmeraShow.com slash Amazon. And now, here to tell you about our Amazon purchase of the day is Rob Spiewak. It's the Panasonic Genius 2.2 cubic foot sensor microwave in stainless steel, Mike. It features inverter technology for even cooking and delicious flavors, plus inverter turbo defrost for quick defrosting. Back to you, Ma! <laughs> Thank you, Rob. <laughs> Amazon has everything. We just need you to get there through our portal. Always open at michaelbarishow.com slash Amazon. The best way to save money and support this show. Bookmark Amazon at michaelbarishow.com and rest easy, my friend. Oh, uh, Ever have okay. something in your life that you started looking forward to and then you begin to dread it? That's, yeah, you know, that's the Amazon I, spot. I think if you do it less DJ and more Rod Roddy, you're going to nail it. You think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yes. Yeah. If you, you, if you don't do you. Well, if it, I it, make it through the weekend, that'll be the plan. Don't do uh, <laughs> do not do the if you miss a little, you miss a lot voice. Do the Rod Roddy voice. Okay. You know? that's, that's right, Mike. That'll, that'll fix it. All I have to do is just live till Tuesday. 
<laughs> oh, wow. so upset. It's really, really not that bad. Okay, uh, <laughs> Jerry Tapes, and uh, then we're going to get the update uh, in the news about uh, Joan Rivers. And the one thing I wanted to tell you about very, very quickly, uh, I had it written down here, is where is it? Where Mark is it? Where Riddell? Is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, Twitch. Yeah, we got to uh, call we, we got to call Twitch. That before we get to Jerry, we just have okay. to call him really quick because I got to find out. It's date night with Twitch. I'm going to uh, the Tampa Bay Red Sox game. We're having a... Uh, Dinner with Twitch, and we're going to the uh, place where they make the circus. I thought it was we're Mike. To... Aren't you going to the International Circus Museum? <laughs> well, there's one thing I want to ask Twitch about. He he put, of course, one rule on it, and it's not working for me. Oh, and that is it is... the shirtless rule? No, it, it's about uh, footwear, and I, I'm not comfortable with it. And I want to see if I can get away with that rule. <laughs> <What> footwear? <laughs> well, I'll tell you when we get Twitch on the line. Because, Hold on, uh, get him online. It's my, it's my date tonight, and... Uh, Carl and I are leaving shortly after the show. We're going to drive up there to uh, where the circus uh, factory is. Now, where are you? what's the city? It's a famous city. It's one I'll recognize, isn't it? For Sarasota. The, it's Sarasota. What is the uh, total time of trip from your casa to Sarasota? Hour, hour and 45, hour and 50. Okay, so it's a little further than I thought. How far from Sarasota to the ultimate destination of Tampa? Uh, probably 25 minutes. So I guess Sarasota, that's sort of a, a burb. It's a suburb yeah. of Tampa. Carl and I are going to okay. be staying around Sarasota tonight. And... So we're meeting Twitch at his office, which is the circus factory, his and then office. we're having dinner, and then I'm dropping the uh, kid and Carla off, and then Twitch and I are going to the ball game. His circus so office. That's it's going to work. Hello? Wonka factory. Ah. Hey, hi, Twitch. <laughs> Twitch, what's happening? How are you, my friend? Hi, boys. Hi, Mark. Uh, all right, Mark, uh, we're, we're all set. Uh, we're going to be uh, getting done taping the show, and then we are off to, uh, to visit you up there at the circus Terrific. factory. And uh, then we're going to th – here's the way I got it laid out there, Twitch. Uh, we go to your uh, circus factory. We get the uh, VIP tour, which we're real excited about. Uh, not too long because we got the little one. And then uh, oh, we sure. go to dinner. We go to dinner after that, right, the early dinner. Is that correct? That is correct. And then after the early dinner, uh, what I'm planning on doing is dropping my wife and kid off at their hotel and then uh, either meeting you up at the uh, ball yard or going in tandem, whichever is more comfortable for you. Because I don't want to get a ride, so you have to haul all the way back and drop me off at the hotel. I wanted to do it uh, that way. So is that are those logistics okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. I actually have to come right by the office and where your hotel is on the way back to my house. So okay, we could then I'll uh, go double up and save on the parking and all that. Okay, then I'll go with you. Then I'll uh, I'll have Carla get back to the hotel, and I'll I'll go with you now. Uh, and I'll and I'll call you right after the show and let you know where we're staying. We're not staying at the exact same place, so if it's not convenient, okay. just is it a be hotel, Mike, or is it know. a tent that you're staying? <laughs> it's a very nice place. It's a very nice place. Okay. Oh. I will not be mentioning it on the show. Understood. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now Twitch. It's, it's uh, actually near the restaurant, I believe. If you if I'm thinking of the same one. Okay, well, it's a different one because uh, I, I didn't tell you about it. So it's, uh, but that's okay because it's all you it's settled, in the, it's Santana. A, it's a, it's. A, <laughs> why are you giggling, Oscar? Why are you giggling? Well, it's already gotten complicated. No, it's not gotten complicated. We're solving all the it complicated parts. It couldn't be easier. Parts. Yeah, I'm it, not at that good. place, but I'm at this place. Oh, it but could if it's be not a, on the way. It's okay. You know what? It could be a lot easier. <laughs> why are you saying? Now, why are you saying you know, that? Well, I mean, the whole trip out to there and the circus museum and everything. It's going to be worth it. I'm not saying not to do it. I'm We're just We're all saying excited that about it. We're looking forward to it. Inherently, I be doing it's a complicated it. plan. Anytime you involve the circus, Mike. <laughs> well, you know, Mike, well, I, have a, I have a very nice uh, souvenir that's sitting on my desk uh, waiting for you that I, I think you're going to be quite happy with. Oh, <laughs> look at him. He's beaming. He's so giddy. <laughs> <laughs> He's so giddy. I'm Your requests have been heard. Oh, fantastic. I've got the costume shop working days and nights, so I'm going to blow fingers off. Okay, am I allowed to guess what it is? No, don't ruin you it may. for me, please, Mr. Because I'm pretty sure it might be the greatest show on earth, Signature Benoit Balls. <laughs> 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 Benoit Balls. Yeah, they're the ones that uh, Gunther Gable Williams <laughs> used. So. That is a different show entirely. Oh, uh, 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 Unclean. Okay. Unclean. <laughs> Not okay. Oh, we run. We run a quality act here, at West. <laughs> quality show, family entertainment. Understood. <laughs> So I'm excited about it. We're you coming up better there. better make sure you do, Buster. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. There's only one rule that you throw threw out there, and, I, you know, it's silly because it's just a quickie little thing that you threw in there. But yeah. I'm getting yeah, ready, yeah. and it, it has to do with footwear. You mentioned that well, yeah. uh, open-toed shoes 
uh, are are verboten uh, at the at the circus factory. And and I, you know, I'm. Who are you going to wear pumps? Twitch. I haven't. <laughs> you know, Mike, I haven't. Mike, we, I haven't covered very, my. Go go ahead. We have very few rules. The one is uh, never assume it's water, and number two is uh, don't wear shoes you care about. Don't wear shoes you care about. Ah. So it, let me ask you this: If I was to wear my my absolute prized footwear, the footwear that never come off of my feet down here in Florida, since I have the moved, genie boots, this is not my genie boots. No, <laughs> they are fetching. I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> since You're a I have, man, Michael Mara. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh God, this is going to be an interesting. It interview. is. Uh, at, since I have moved down here, the, the I my Echo sandals have not come uh-huh. off of my feet for the entire time that I have been mm. in South Florida. You're I welcome, love ladies. them. They, they love my feet. They make love to my feet, Twitch. And you said gotcha. we were going to be walking uh, an awfully long way. And so since we're going to be walking a lot, I was wondering, is it possible that I could wear, if I was really careful, that I could wear my uh, my lovely little sandals as we're... Why are you shaking your well, head? You Oscar, know- why are you... Wait a minute, Twitch. Why are you shaking your head, Oscar? Why are you shaking your just head? Just bring closed-toed footwear. Yeah. Just bring them, and then you can switch into your Echo sandals when you're done with the tour. And you know it would be great just, if you could wear long... Just sniff my bag. How's that? <laughs> Mike, just <laughs> sniff my wow. bag. The solution is this. Closed-toed <laughs> shoes, but huge ones, like a clown would wear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm waiting... I'm waiting for the big answer. Are they going to let me in if I have sandals on? Sure. The the concern is that we will be walking through metal shops, auto body shops. There's a lot of sharp objects. There's a lot of heavy objects uh, moving uh, around on the floor. A a metal splinter, which I've had before, uh, just walking around the shops, I've gotten one before, is the most painful thing you could ever deal with. You don't want to even Not a good time. Oh, well, in that case, now that I know that. Train cars. Okay, now that Oscar said that, well, in that case, I'm going to wear my sandals. Okay, that'll be great when you show up on Tuesday with Lockjaw. <laughs> lock I'll, I'll, make, I'll make sure I grab some Lysol from the cabinet. I'm going to be, I will be, you know what? I'm going to be extra careful where I walk. Mm. How's that? Yeah, metal oh, shops. Oh, huh? could but, you get him a wheelchair? <laughs> uh, or maybe one of the rascal scooters he's so fond of. Okay. Perfect. Ah, uh, that's that's all there's your up. solution. Yeah. All right, so Twitch, we're heading out of here. Steel, oh, this, I have to stop this. Uh, okay, I have to stop this right now. Hey, Twitch, so we're going to be heading out, uh, mm, I'm going to say probably around the uh, noon hour, getting us up there you know, a little before uh, 2 o'clock or so, and uh, check in and then come over and see you after sometime uh, 2, 2.30. Does that sound good for you? That is perfect. I'm looking forward to catching up with you. And you've, you've already sent me the address, so I know where we're going, correct? Perfect, and if you need uh, additional instructions, give me a call, and I'll I'll guide you in like Magellan. Perfect. And hey, cool. I look forward to uh, you know watching two of the worst teams in baseball tonight. It should be a lot of fun as we. Uh, oh. But but we got well, great seats. You, uh, yes, go ahead. You you made you made a smart decision about the uh, suck fest Redskins game last night. Yeah, 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 yeah and not not fun, not fun at all. But uh, I tell you I what, look they forward. shot that cannon off of the pirate ship, and I about crap my pants. <laughs> 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 it reverberates off the walls in there, and there's no warning whatsoever. It's not necessarily when they score or anything; it's just when some Yahoo wants to mash the button, and the thing goes crazy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Twitch, we will see you this afternoon. Looking forward to it. Very good, my friend. I'll see you. All right, ciao, take ciao. care. Very good. A little delay with the old Skype call, isn't uh, it? A little bit of a delay, delay with Riddell. Yes. So. <laughs> now, now we're on, we're on uh, we're on the separate signal that we share with the building when we call people. That's yeah. why. Okay, and right. Mike's double check. Remember yeah. the address: one two three Cotton Candy Lane. Yay! <laughs> Mike, yes, seriously the about the shoes? Just because you 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 can be as careful as you'd like. Yeah. If it's not in your hands. It's not in your hands because if you if you step on something with your sandals and a sliver of metal gets kicked up and gets underneath your sandal, it's curtains. It's mm-hmm. something that you'll have to deal with for two weeks. It's horrible. It's happened to me. It sucks. Just 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 saying. Just mm-hmm. saying. Not worth it. <laughs> Work boots, Mike. Work boots. Not worth it. Sneakers are fine. Yeah. But sandals, it's you're just you're asking for it. You want to prove a point? Prove it somewhere else, I would say. Just a thought. Not a sermon. He's speaking from experience. He's ruining my Friday night.
How does that ruin your Friday night? No, I'll think about it. I'll think about what I know. You know, you know how I am. You know how I react, right? This seems like minor. This seems like a little exchange between Oscar and me and you, and, and it's uh, going to be a throwaway. I'm now going to be stewing about this for the rest of the show. I'm going to be thinking about it because I just, uh, you know, I. I you want to do what you want to do. I get it. <laughs> Do it. Do it some other time. That's what I would say. The okay. last thing we need, Mike, is you go into a Red Sox game and bleeding out tonight. All right, I'll wear my black gravity defiers. Nice. Very good. <laughs> That's what I'll... And also, it wouldn't kill you to wear gloves. <laughs> <laughs> and long pants. This time, I'm wearing shorts, right? That's fine. I can wear That's shorts. It's, it's 99 degrees oh, down yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. How short shorts, are they? Right? How short uh, are they? Are you familiar Chubbies? with the 1973 <laughs> Boston Celtics? Yes. Oh, God. Okay, yes. then you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It'll look you can like almost you... see the hair on my ass. Mike, no matter <laughs> yeah. what happens when you wear those, it'll look like you have a splinter. <laughs> a wonderful sputter. Okay, Rob, we yes. have time. You can do it. All right. I know that, you know, back on the old Don and Mike show, we made Rob wait for Jerry tapes for probably usually the December. better part of a decade. It was usually December when we got to Labor Day tapes. Just exactly. a couple that I know you would love to hear, Mike. Here he is talking about one of his favorite, ostensibly one of his favorite shows, Jerry and the show Glee. One of the nicest programs <laughs> that I have had the good fortune of seeing is a program on television now that's called Glee. <laughs> what you're about to see is a wheelchair ballet set to the song Proud Mary from the hit show Glee. 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 How old is Jerry now? Just is he 87? 85, 87? Oh, well into the 80s. Yeah, he's, he's, he's 80s in the rearview mirror for him. Uh, uh, call Sapphire and ask him. <laughs> <laughs> One thing you could always count on, Mike, he would always mention Eva Braun. I got it. What is it? Intro. Intro. I'm not ready to intro. Okay. So his floor director is telling him what to do. They're he's on the on air, right? Television. They're live, and, and he's not paying attention. And correct? he's they're telling him what to do because he's on television. He says, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And can you, you play can, that for the beginning because yeah, you needed the setup for that. And, you know, it's, the thing is, folks, even if you don't appreciate him as a comic, appreciate the fact that we no, longer have, we no longer have the ticking time bomb of him on television when stuff like this would happen. Well, and Dennis that was Miller, part of the excitement. De Dennis Miller told me a long, long time ago that he doesn't like Jerry when Jerry's trying to be funny. When he laughs at Jerry, it's when Jerry's trying to be serious. Okay. Yeah. And that's when, or when Jerry's having a meltdown. That's when Jerry truly is funny. Because I never was amused at Jerry trying to make me laugh. I was amused at Jerry being the diva. That, well, to me, was the fascination with Jerry. This Lewis. is fascinating diva stuff here when he talks to his floor director. Oh, God, am I... I got it. What is it? Intro. Intro. I'm not ready to intro. Okay. <laughs> like working with Eva Braun. And I love Jesus. How many times have I heard that? What I love is she love asks him to do likes. something so reasonable, which is right. be on television. And yes, incidentally, the real name of that lady is Beth Ann McBride, if you were wondering. <laughs> nah, that, my, is, that is the real name. I have to play this. Of all the years I watched it, I think this might be my favorite isolated tape, and it's not even a Jerry tape. It's Ed McMahon. And it's Ed McMahon when he was the announcer, the <laughs> great late Ed McMahon, trying to throw it to the local. All he had to do was read a tease. And this has not been equaled since my last Amazon spot. <laughs> here, is, <laughs> here is the great Ed McMahon. There's more coming up with the part of the plan. <laughs> Daniel Rodriguez, the color purple, and Bob Zaney. So... Stick around. <laughs> that is so Mike, sad. Do you want it one more time? Oh, yeah, please. <laughs> There's more coming up with the part of the plan. Daniel Rodriguez, the color purple, and Bob Zaney. So stick around. So that's a little taste of telethon stuff for you guys. <laughs> and just so you know, uh, more for me than for anyone else, I'm going to throw up a bonus episode of Cake and Cookies at the end of the weekend cool. where I go back and play some of my favorite telethon tapes going back to literally the turn of the century. So it'll only be about a half hour. Tune in, and if you need a Jerry fix, I'll be there for you, just like the theme from Friends. So anyway, <laughs> we will have that.
<laughs> Very good. Thank you, Rob. And uh, I'm glad you got that out there. I appreciate and, uh, you letting me do it, Mike. It was, uh, I'm sorry. So there really is nothing this weekend as far as the telephone, no. correct? No. But you know, ALS is technically under the MDA umbrella. So with the Ice Bucket Challenge, this has been one of the most successful fundraising years for MDA ever. But it's still, it's for me, there's a void. I miss my Jerry. Oh, well, that's good. I'm glad they uh, made it up in another area. We'll take a break. When we come back, it's Oscar Lazzi in the very latest on uh, Joan Rivers, although uh, lots of you listen to this four days after we tape it, so right. maybe it really won't be the latest. But I want to get an update because we're doing it right now, uh, you know, uh, on Friday morning. So we'll uh, take a break, come back with more on the Mike O'Mara Show. This week on the Mike O'Mara Bonus Show. This week on the Mike O'Mara Show bonus hour, love is in the air. That's right. We'll be talking about all the wonderful ways of love. You're not going to want to miss it. We've got everything from relationships to excitement to stains on mattresses on the Mike O'Mara Show bonus hour. The Mike O'Mara Bonus Show, because five hours a week just ain't enough. Always available at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Bonus. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Uh, I've been talking about getting back into the gym and uh, doing these uh, seated rows that actually uh, tweaked my back a couple of days ago. I'm not kidding you. I can go to bed at night with back pain and wake up in the morning without back pain, and that is simply because of my sleep number bed. There's no other reason that I can explain it. The dual air technology in my sleep number bed has significantly reduced my back pain, and my wife and I sleep better than we ever have before. If you say you can't afford a sleep number bed, you have to ask yourself, is it worth it to have another night of terrible sleep? The answer is no. Do me a favor. Check out all the full line of sleep number beds with dual air and sleep IQ technology. When you get one, you'll be like me and wonder how you ever slept without it. I love this thing, and I love the fact that I wake up in the morning without back pain. This Labor Day sleep number stores have all beds on sale during their biggest sale of the year. My sleep number setting is an 80. Carlos is an 85. There's only one place in the world to find the sleep number bed with sleep IQ technology, and that's a sleep number store. Right now, during the biggest sale of the year, all beds are on sale. Save 50% on the Labor Day limited edition bed no better sleep find your sleep number setting today at any of the 450 sleep number stores by calling 800-511-0061 that's 800-511-0061 and you can find your store anywhere nationwide tell them that mike o'mara sent you without further ado let's open it up and uh get him out of his scowling slumber and uh bring in oscar santana with oscar it does sometimes i with, with this camera position i do get when you're playing the jerry tapes yeah. I'm looking at Oscar, and this is what I'm looking at. <laughs> I'm not a Yeri guy. What do you want? He's not a Yeri guy. That's yeah. true. But, you know, Mike, right, at I'm least he's tuned you in when we talk food. Him. I'm going to do to Oscar during the entire Oscarazzi what, what you do to Rob during, <laughs> during his. Please do. I'm gonna do you won't, you know go. what, Mike? You are too engaged as a broadcaster. You could never I do know. it. Aye, 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 aye. Gentlemen. You ask about Joan Rivers. As of 20 (laughs) minutes ago, this is the latest. As of 20 minutes ago? 20 minutes ago. Yes. Joan Rivers is still alive and kicking. (laughs) I believe you might be half right there. Well, she's Mike, you should stop texting. We're doing Oscar's segment. What? Details (laughs) on the 81-year-old Brooklyn-born celebrity are as follows. Apparently, she was having a small procedure done on her vocal cords. It was an endoscopy, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. And... She stopped breathing. They had to rush her to Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. And there they resuscitated her. My question to you guys is, is an endoscopy normal at that age? Sure. It's, yeah. it's I a, think uh, it, it could be for a variety of reasons, right? You, and you can go checking in, on reflux or something like Mike, that. And it also can go in any entrance. <laughs> and you, But they're checking it was her throat, It correct? was her throat. They were was? checking. And you know what they said this morning is the fact that they had her doctor, her the one that was doing the procedure, had her... Uh, there is a some sort of fire uh, paperwork you can file so you can be admitted to a hospital without being checked out first. Ah. It saved her life. The fact that she got into Sinai so quick, they just wheeled her in and saved her That's life. So All cool. right, let me. The, the question I have about this right now is: they say she is critical yet resting comfortably. Yeah, Melissa that Rivers is, thanked everyone for the overwhelming love and support, and her mother in a statement said that from the hospital that she is resting comfortably. Like you said, doesn't say that she's in critical condition at the moment. Okay, so we don't know. See, resting comfortably is yeah. subject to interpretation. I don't know when what I that means. That, if she's I always with it. think that it, it could be a drug-induced comfort. Yeah, like, you know. Yeah. And the, but if she, what I want to know and has not been revealed, is she currently breathing on her own? That's the huge factor here. Because That's I think you know a lot of Why people. Why would you wanna... hide all of that though? 
uh, privacy. You know, they, they don't want uh, anybody to know what's going on or how, uh, you know, it, my, my thought is this. When you lose consciousness and they have to resuscitate, the uh, brain doesn't get oxygen. And right. I'm wondering, and she had a, she went into cardiac arrest. I, mm-hmm. I read that yesterday. Yes. Uh, so my question is, what is her current state? And I think any fans of hers, you know, I've said it on the show. I'm a huge fan of uh, Joan Rivers. She did that documentary where they uh, oh, showed her behind wonderful. the scenes she and uh, opened herself up like yeah. a haddock. It was great. So, uh, you know, hope she does well. I think we'd use her yeah. for a few more she years. She has every chance of a successful recovery based on the fact if you're going to have cardiac arrest, do it while you're having a medical procedure because right. you're surrounded by doctors. Thousand percent chance that she was getting CPR the entire way to the I hospital. Right. And if you do that, you can be okay. So yeah. fingers okay. crossed. She's fantastic. We'll keep, uh, She's we'll definitely keep, uh, an institution. You posted on that. Absolutely. All right. Uh, from one end of the spectrum to the other, Britney Spears is single again. Did hey. you hear? Did you hear this? You hear that? Rupo? I didn't know she'd ever taken up with another slacker. She had a lawyer boyfriend, and this is where it was show, Ethel Bailey. Mike. Show business is show business. <laughs> Apparently, a video was being shopped around of her boyfriend kissing another woman, uh, evidence of him cheating on Britney Spears. Her father, who, as you know, probably saved her life and her career years ago. Is that Randy? By jumping in and managing her. Yes, yes. It's not Randy Spears, is it? It is. Look at you. <laughs> is that the porn star? Yeah. Is that the porn star? the only Rob Spears that you went with a porn That's name. That's <laughs> Randy Dirty Spears. That's her funny. father, who became uh, her conservator, if I'm not mistaken, yes. when she was younger and going crazy, uh, stepped in and actually purchased the video. Purchased the video, according to TMZ. Oh, wow. Called Britney Spears and said, I have something to show you. They got together, showed her the video before it went public, and it was embarrassing to her, her family, and her kids. And at that point, she picked up the phone and broke up with him. Wow. And he spent a pretty penny to do so. Well handled on his behalf, but it's a shame that the story got out. Right? Because that sort of defeats the whole purpose, doesn't it? No, I agree. Though the fact that a father would go out of his way to do that, Mm -hmm. pretty cool. I would, uh, this is absolutely not justifying this gentleman's behavior in any way, shape, or form, but I would just imagine that it would just be my impression, based on her history, her divaness, uh, that it might be a pretty tall order to be in a relationship with Britney Spears. Yes. I would think it'd be a little rough, and I would also, you know, I still harken back to those hygiene issues that yes. she used to have. And the gooey fraps, Mike, very expensive. Yeah. And I would imagine that, uh, you know, on a, a particular week or two where she's not working, that, uh, you know, like a midweek type of thing, probably not. Not all that attractive. Yeah, you might want to call maids on the run and have them tidy up the bedroom. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> all right, moving on, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, do we have any Oranges and New Black fans outside of me here in the studio? Mm. I've watched it. I haven't watched it a lot. I don't dislike it, but I haven't uh, gone all in on it yet. Uh, the series is based on a best-selling book titled uh, Oranges of the New Black, and locally here, the author uh, is going to be in town on September 23rd. And if you want to go check her out, she's going to be at UDC of all places. University of D.C.? Yeah, isn't that pretty cool? That is. So all she'll right. talk about her time uh, because it's based on her true life story. So she served hard time? She, ser- uh, she served 15 months of hard time. Hard and time, Mike. She also will talk about her dabbling in drug trafficking and what, she, what the entire show is based on. Hmm. So she wrote the book, A Lady, based on her own personal experience. Yes, and then they made the TV show out of it. Wow. Pretty crazy, okay. right? I did not know yeah. that. A whole new Women's perspective proven. when you watch it. So, yeah. again, locally, if you're in the yeah. D.C. area, September 23rd, Tuesday, 7 p.m. at UDC. Yeah, I'm in this prison. Yeah, there, showers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is a bidding war going on for Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie's fo- wedding photos. We're so, talking- they are out there. They, I was wondering if because of their money that they would actually... Uh, keep it in the family. And they do have, have them in the nothing. family, but uh-huh. they're asking any of the guests for photos. The paparazzi is. The ah. bids are up to half a million dollars for a single photo. A single photo. If you were on wow. the guest list for Brad and Angelina Jolie, I would think there is there is a good chance, and I mean this, that you're going to be able to get away with not having any scumbags release the photos that they don't want to be released. Yeah, and it was a I small, hope so. I hope they lose. Largely, it was described as small and largely family. So yeah. I think they might be okay on here. We'll see what happens. It's a lot Absolutely. of money. One more. Yeah. Uh, Brian Singer, if you're a fan of his work, X-Men, uh, most notably as of late, the X-Men movies, right. uh, he, his lawsuit has been abandoned by his accuser. You remember hearing all that to-do about uh, him being kind of a dirty birdie and abusing uh, these gentlemen in Hollywood? Yes. Yeah, uh, This guy came out, dropped the lawsuit. Apparently his legal team broke up, 
and uh, they tried to settle for a, a reported sum of a hundred thousand dollars, and the gentleman wouldn't take that. And then now you know, in front of the Supreme Court in California, they dropped the entire lawsuit. G- good day Which for, means good day that for the, him. Yeah. But the allegations are more damaging sometimes, so the damage is kind of done with this guy. But uh, it, does that mean that this thing is completely uh, without merit? Is that why they dropped it? Uh, do we have any answer about that? There is an allegation that there could be um, an outside-the-court settlement that no one's talking about here. But I would say this. if At the beginning of this trial, because we covered it in length right. here— the guy said he just wanted justice, yeah. and now he's taken, if it is $100,000, did he just want justice, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, Could exactly. Be. Who knows? We'll see what and happens. And you know what? Yeah. We've got such a short um, attention span anymore, I don't know that it did a lot of damage. Yeah, probably not, because you know? he's a behind-the-scenes guy. He's not yeah. out in front yeah. of the camera. That's Oscar Nazi. Thank you very much, Oscar. Hey, Link, if you want to see Oscar tonight, yes. seriously, uh, he's going to be out of Jam and Java Thank in you. Vienna, Virginia, with uh, our good friend Chad Dukes. It's Big O and Dukes. They're going to be on stage. It is Summer Strings and uh, Summer Suds and Strings. You got it. And it's a great show, and uh, check you. them out. Great music, and our good friends Big O and Dukes yes. are going to be up on stage. So check that out. That should be a lot of fun. Appreciate we'll take a break, it. and we will come back with the Audio Vault and Rob. Spiewak right here on the Mike O'Mara Show. Podcasts are great, but with all the podcasts out there, how do you choose? Let me recommend for your listening pleasure, Cake and Cookies. It's hosted by Katie Forbes Von Herman and my dad, Rob Spiewak. I like it because it's family friendly, and they never use words like fuck, head, bullshit, son of a bitch, and they never say go fuck yourself, because kids don't need that kind of filth in their life. Cake and Cookies, every Wednesday at MikeOMarisShow.com, a part of more broadcasting. Mike, that's my middle schooler now. I have a request. Yes? Uh, when the time comes at Christmas time, yeah. we have to have him read the thing from Charlie Brown. You know, oh, doesn't he sound just like Linus right now? <laughs> he sounds exactly oh, like Linus. Oh, my God, Linus. you're right. Yeah. He said, doesn't wow, he sound like I Linus? I thought about it. You're that right. We'll do that. I promise you I will. That's great. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. You know, there are lots of things I don't understand. Magic tricks, microwaves, the popularity of the Kardashians, but I'm okay with that. The one thing I wish I understood better was my finances, yeah. and I bet you're the same way. Between all your bank accounts, your stocks, your various assets, your 401k, it seems like it's impossible to keep track of everything. Until now. Enter Personal Capital. Personal Capital is a free and secure tool that will let you keep track of all your finances in one place. Whether you use your computer, your phone, or your tablet, it's all right there on one screen with real-time and intuitive graphs. Personal Capital also shows you how much you're overpaying in fees and how to reduce those fees. That may be the very best thing about Personal Capital. Even better, with Personal Capital, you'll get tailored advice on how to optimize your investment. Face it, knowledge is power, and Personal Capital gives you that power. It takes one minute to set up your free account. Go to personalcapital.com slash TMOS. Please do it for us, and do it to start growing your money. Money! That's personalcapital.com slash T-M-O-S. And without further ado, let's open up the uh, audio vault for Labor Day weekend. This is Friday, Aug 29, 2014. Seems to be a trend now, not so much on the Internet, but just in families. When you present big news to someone, if you give someone a gift, you videotape them to capture the reaction, ah, right? Yeah, very true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a, I like that setup right, right away. And I like that setup right away. Here is a young lady who's going to have herself another baby, okay? And she okay. wanted to tell the soon to be big brother that she was pregnant because i bet she thought he'd be very excited the little boy was not what i would call excited <laughs> i'm pregnant <laughs> what, what were you thinking why you have to uh, just just get another baby you just have two so why do you, why why do you this is exasperating <laughs> Maya. because because you just got two so you don't- why do you want to place? Why you want to get another baby and just replace one of your babies if there's too much? Oh, baby, we will never replace you and Amaya. You just gonna have another brother or sister that you have to take care of. Well, help take care of. That doesn't make no sense. This makes no sense. How is it when a three-year-old oh, is telling reaction. you to be responsible? <laughs> I love it. I love that. Uh, Thursday night, one of the hottest Thursday night shows, Mike, and I know you watch it each and every week on VH1, Dating Naked. 
Now, when I first read the dating naked description, my worry was this. I said to myself, Rob, they're not going to handle this show in a classy way. <laughs> Thank God I was wrong. Right. Here is, uh, last night, the big date was uh, AJ and Meg. Okay. okay. And uh, here is that classy meetup. She looks like she's smuggling cantaloupes in her chest. Hi. It's brisk here in paradise. I'm AJ. I'm Meg. Nice, <laughs> nice to meet you. Meet you. Yeah, um, I barely even saw Meg. I just saw those two giant fake boobs staring a hole right through me. I don't even know, I don't even know where to begin. I worked at a strip club in New York City for two and a half, three years. My boobs are fake. They're out there. I'm naked. It's noticeable. They pay the bills better than little boobs. It's like they were headlights, just like, like they were spotlights. Like this, I mean, it's, it's... It's all hanging out there right now, so we're gonna have a good time. Between the strip club and all the guys I've slept with, my boobs have magical powers. Magical powers. I don't want to like to Way call- to go, whore. You know what? I don't think they should call the show Dating Naked. I think they should call it Dick and Bitch. There are also is some, <laughs> there's some controversy behind the show. Apparently, and this just happened in, I think, two episodes ago. Yeah. They didn't pixelate one of uh, the scenes where oh. one young lady suing the show because her meat sandwich was exposed. Oh, <laughs> no. Yeah, if you're going to pixelate anything, yeah, that's that would maybe wow. something you have to do. Well, maybe oh, it was in my. such a way that it didn't resemble what it might have been. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Never can tell, Mike. Oh, my God. Now. I find this sad. We've featured this guy several times on the Audio Vault. His name is Tom Durkin. The name doesn't mean anything to you. But is he for, a race, yes, race, race for track guy? Yes, 43 years, he's been the voice of Saratoga. And okay. uh, he's probably the best live announcer for race uh, racing out there. And Saratoga may be the most beautiful track in the United States. Gorgeous place. He's retiring. You know, that's where Big Daddy uh, honeymooned. In 1941, really? Saratoga Absolutely Springs. Absolutely gorgeous spot. Absolutely beautiful. Tom Durkin is retiring after 43 years at Saratoga. Uh, you'll remember him. We were played a clip years back where the horse was called R, and he, he did it like a pirate. Yeah, talk he, like a pirate day. Yeah, here is one of uh, a montage of some of his greatest race calls. I wish him all the best because I love this guy, Tom Durkin. And they're off. And oh no, it's my mother-in-law won't go away. It's do re mi fa sol la ti. I am bokum kai am bokum congo mando kai am bokum gata. And hika maka raka dakalola. Sixth, about six lengths off the lead. And then it's dika haka maka raka dola. Followed by homeroom jester. And the trailer is dola rola rola raka daka mola hola. In the middle of the track is. <laughs> Coming down to the final 16th, it is Stan Pat in front. Arg! 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 In front, coming down to the wire. They're coming to the finish, and it's all. Arg! <laughs> Elon fell in second, Stan Pat there. That's the best. Uh, oh, that's Wish fantastic. him all the best, Tom Durkin. And I, anytime I can play a jingle, Mike, you know I love to do it. James Brown. This is circulating on YouTube right now, and it's old. It's from 1992, but for some reason, it's just getting the play. It's from Japan. In 1992, James Brown, the godfather of soul, the hardest working man in show business. I love that one. Soul brother number one did a commercial for Japanese noodle soup. Really? To the tune of, I believe it's Sex Machine. Okay. Uh, but anyway, this is James Brown on Japanese television. <laughs> <laughs> and that's him at the end. Mm, what are we going over to Japan to make our commercials? We should get over there. Hop on. We incredible. should make a lot of money doing it. I know that. Now, what do you think? You think it's totally phonetic where they uh, just uh, hold up the big signs and he's like, Miss Geneva. Sounds like he was saying, Miss Geneva. You know Miss what? Miss Geneva. <laughs> Actually, he put out eight records in this country before people found out he wasn't speaking Japanese. <laughs> Actually, so, the uh, translation <laughs> for that particular song is, my anaconda don't, my anaconda don't, my anaconda don't want some if they ain't got buns, hon. I don't have time to play the trailer, but I just want to make Mike, I want to make you feel real old as I feel real old. Do you realize this week, for one week only, they're releasing Ghostbusters to theaters again? 
for the 30th anniversary. Pretty cool. 30 wow. years ago, Ghostbusters came out. And uh, it's a good film, so if your kids haven't seen it, take them out to see the big marshmallow man. But mm -hmm. also, Mike, watch out for the food recall. Here's a, uh, uh, a news oddity. Uh, Chinese authorities have uh, seized 30,000 tons chicken feet. Mm. <laughs> what are you talking about? Because they're tainted. Oh. Mm. 30,000 tons of bad chicken feet. Well, there goes my cookout. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great Labor Day weekend, everybody. That's your Magic Audio Vault. Enjoy your Friday. This concludes our broadcast day, but dry your eyes. It's not goodbye. Just so long. You can always write us a letter. Send it to TMOS, P.O. Box 2796, Leesburg, Virginia, 20177. Email technical support questions to ponyboy at michaelmarashow.com. And if you want to be on the legendarily popular Thursday mailbag segment, drop a line to the jolly one, rob at michaelmarashow.com. And remember, the official TMOS e-voice line remains at 800 440 8167. Open all the time. No waiting. Check out Big O and Dukes tonight at Jam and Java Thank in you. Vienna, Virginia. Woo! It is their summer suds and strings show. And uh, that'll be a lot of fun to kick off your Labor Day weekend. That's it. We got to get out of here. So long, everybody. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Now that the show's over, don't forget to sign up for your free trial of Personal Capital right now. Go to MichaelMarishow.com and click the Personal Capital banner or go to PersonalCapital.com slash TMOS. Again, click the Personal Capital banner on MichaelMarishow.com or go to PersonalCapital.com slash TMOS. Labor Day. Michael Mara, Radio Entertainment. <laughs>